bit about um, prong sizing for our babies, for our bubble CPAPs. So the first thing that we would do when we're putting on our flexi trunk interface is measure our OFC. And so this baby looks at about 23. So we'll probably go with this hat. But if we were at 22, which of these hats would we use? That's right, the smaller one. <laughs> because we want our hats to be as snug as possible. But since we're 23, we'll go with this one. And it's already been through a little bit, but when you first start, you'll sort of open it up to stretch it out a little bit there. These go into the back. gently place on baby's head. This baby has a pretty sticky head, so it's a little harder. Okay, we want this to be midline. We want to double check that we're meeting our standards, so we want this to be all the way at the base of the neck. We want the front of the hat to cover, um, be on top of, or just above our eyebrows, and our ears to be covered. So we look good. These hats can stretch out quite a bit, and so you wanna change them probably every two to three days, because when they do stretch out, they can pull up, and that will pull your whole interface up and pull your prongs. Okay, so next, we'll pick out our nasal tubing. And so there's three sizes, and they normally go by weight. This is obviously our smallest size for our smallest baby, and it's the 50. And when we're setting it up, we just want to make sure that we are parallel with the nose. So actually, it looks like we could use one of the additional foam blocks that comes with it. You never want to throw away your foam blocks, just in case you need to adjust. So that looks parallel. So then the next thing we'll do is find our prong size. So in each of the nasal tubing kits comes with one of these prong sizers, and I'll show you how we decide. So I go and I just see, are these dotted lines going to the inside of the nose? Yes. Then I'll go up. Yes, we're still inside. Yeah. No. See how we're just outside of the inner diameter of that nostril. So we go back one where we still fit. And that's our size. Okay, and to put this on can be sort of tricky, but you wanna fold it in. Uh-oh, I'll have to edit this part. It's okay. <laughs> to have an assistant for this part, but we'll put those prongs into those mirrors. And sometimes you might even have to finagle it a little bit. There we go. So we're in. And then you'll take these two straps. Well, first you'll cover this. And you want to use the least amount of tension as possible. Okay, so now that our prongs are in, we look good. We'll untwist that guy. So we'll hook that in to this blue glider and tighten simultaneously and attach to the blue straps at the side. Okay. There we have it. If you simultaneously tighten, that helps relieve a common issue where it gets pulled over to one side. And so now we can see that our prongs are way off of our septum because they actually cannot go farther deeper into the nares. And that's because they're occluding at the base here, which is what we want because we all know for CPAP to work, we have to have a good seal. And so that's why it needs to be occlusive. 
Now to discuss some common problems that might lead to septal breakdown. One of those problems is the hat is too big like we discussed pulling the entire interface. Another one of those problems is if this nasal um, tubing extends past the infant's forehead, that can actually pull it back like that. It's not good. <clears throat> Another reason might be that these straps are way too tight. So straps are pulled way too tight. That's not going to work either. So our baby's nares aren't even big enough for that to happen, but it is pushing onto the septum. Too small of prongs will not only pinch the septum, but it will also allow the interface to slide up and slide those prongs directly all the way up into the nares so that it's resting on the base of the septum. And so that's not what we want, and it's also not as occlusive, and so we're providing less good CPAP. Another trick is that the first two numbers <coughs> For the actual nair size, so 45 or 50, and then the second two numbers are the width in between those prongs, so that's the septal width. And so 50-40 and 50-50 are the same size prongs, but um, if your septum is looking a little pinched on 50-40, you can increase up to 50-50.